one step farther to see am I justified in this stand. And I say, I'm not speaking, I'm speaking as a black man from America, which is a racist society. No matter how much you hear it talk about democracy, it's as racist as South Africa or as racist as Portugal or as racist as any other racial, racialist society on this, on this earth. The only difference between it and South Africa, South Africa preaches separation and practices separation. America preaches integration and practices segregation. This is the only difference. They don't practice what they preach. Whereas South Africa preaches and practices the same thing. I have more respect for a man who lets me know where he stands, even if he's wrong, than the one who comes up like an angel and is nothing but a devil. <laughs> The, the, the system of government that America has consists of committees. There are 16 senatorial committees that govern the country and uh, 20 congressional committees. 10 of the 16 uh, senatorial committees are in the hands of southern racialist senators who are racialists. 13 of the 20, about this was before the last election, I think it's even more so now. Ten of the 16 committees, senatorial committees, are in the hands of senators who are southern racialists. Thirteen of the 20 congressional committees were in the hands of uh, southern congressmen who are racialists. Which means out of the 36 committees that govern the uh, foreign and domestic direction of that government, 23 are in the hands of southern racialists. Men who in no way believe in the equality of man and men who do anything within their power to see that the black man never gets to the same seat or to the same level that they are on. The reason that these men from that area have that type of power is because America has a seniority system. And, the, and the, these who have that seniority have been there longer than anyone else because the black people in the areas where they live can't vote. And it is only because the black man is deprived of his vote that puts these men in positions of power that gives them such influence in the government beyond their actual intellectual or political ability, or be even beyond the number of people from the areas that they represent. So we, have, we can see in that country that no matter what the federal government professes uh, to be doing, the power of the federal government lies in these committees, and any time a black man or any kind of legislation is proposed to benefit the black man or give the black man his just due, we find that it's locked up in these committees right here. And when they let something through the committee, usually it is so chopped up and fixed up that by the time it becomes law, it's a law that can't be enforced. Well, another example is the Supreme Court desegregation decision that was handed down in 1954. This is a law. And this law, they have not been able to implement this law in New York City or in Boston or in uh, uh, Cleveland or Chicago or the northern cities. And my contention is that any time you have a country, supposedly a democracy, supposedly the land of the free and the home of the brave, and it can't enforce laws even in the northern most cosmopolitan and progressive part of it that will benefit a black man, if those laws can't be enforced or that law can't be enforced, how much heart do you think we will get when they pass some civil rights legislation which only involves more laws? If they can't enforce this law, they'll never enforce those laws. So my contention is that we are faced with a racialistic society, a society in which they are deceitful, deceptive, and the only way we can bring about a change is to talk the kind of language, speak the language that they understand. The racialist never understands a peaceful language. The racialist never understands the nonviolent language. The racialist, we have, he's spoken his language to us for 400 years. We have been the victim of his brutality. We are the ones who face his dogs that tear the flesh from our limbs, only because we want to enforce the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones who have our skulls crushed, not by the Ku Klux Klan, but by policemen, only because we want to enforce what they call the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones upon whom water hoses are turned with pressure so hard that it rips the clothes from our back. Not men, but the clothes from the backs of women and children. You've seen it yourself. Only because we want to enforce what they call the law. Well, any time you live in a society supposedly based upon law, and it doesn't enforce its own law because the color of a man's skin happens to be wrong, then I say those people are justified to resort to any means necessary to bring about justice where the government can't give them justice.
don't believe in any form of unjustified extremism. But I believe that when a man is exercising extremism, a human being is exercising extremism in defense of liberty for human beings, it's no vice. And when one is moderate in the pursuit of justice for human beings, I say he's a sinner. And I might add in my conclusion, in fact, America is one of the best examples when you read its history about extremism. Old Patrick Henry said, liberty or death, that's extreme. Very extreme. I, I read once, passingly, about a man named Shakespeare. I only read about him passing, passingly, but I remember one thing he wrote that kind of moved me. Uh, he put it in the mouth of Hamlet, I think it was, who said, to be or not to be. He was in doubt about something. <laughs> Whether it was nobler in the mind of man to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, moderation, or to take up arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing, end them. And I go for that. If you take up arms, you'll end it. But if you sit around and wait for the one who's, who's in power to make up his mind that he should end it, you'll be waiting a long time. And in my opinion, the young generation of whites, blacks, brown, whatever else there is, you're living at a time of extremism, a time of revolution, a time when there's got to be a change. People in power have misused it, and now there has to be a change, and a better world has to be built, and the only way it's going to be built with it, with it, it is with extreme methods. And I, for one, will join in with anyone, don't care what color you are, as long as you want to change this miserable condition that exists on this earth.